I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a very important video to estimate the value of radicals. I am very thankful to all the subscribers and viewers who have made my videos on square root uh, very likable. The question here is to find approximate value of the following. We will calculate square root of 24.6 and also 3.968 to the power of 3 over 2. Now I'm going to use calculus to find this value. So let's first understand the concept. I'll also provide you with a link uh, which will give you the details of uh, or concepts behind what we are trying to do here, right? So we're trying to find square root value. So let us see how a square root function looks like. So if I sketch a graph of a square root function, I will get something like this, right? So that is how a square root function may look like. Now, we know square root of few numbers. For example, closest to 24 is 25, square root is 5. We know that, correct? So what we'll try to do is we'll work around a point which is known to us. So this point is known to us and we know that the this is a square root of x here and this is x for us, correct? So what we know here is that the value for square root of 25, if I write the x value as 25, I know its square root is 5. But in this particular question, we are interested in finding the value for 24.6. That means it is slightly on the left side, right? So it's so let's break the scale. So I'm making it bigger so that you understand what we're trying to do here. So we look for a point here and let's say this point here is 24.6 and we want to find what this is. Correct? That is the result. Now we know that this point 24.6 is slightly away from the point whose perfect square root is known to us. So that is the distance delta x between the two, right? And the, the difference in the y value is delta y, which is, let me write with a different ink. So delta y is this difference, right? Okay. So that is the change which we want to figure out. So what I'm trying to say here is that I could consider square root of 24.6 as equal to square root of 25 minus some value, which is of course 0 0.4 in this case, correct? So that is 24.6, 25 minus 0 0.4. Now knowing the value at 25, which is 5, I can estimate that it is slightly smaller than 5. Perfect. So that is the close estimate which I can always make. Now here is differentials which will give you a fairly accurate answer. So what we are working with is a function which is let's say y equals to square root of x. Now what is dy dx? If I differentiate this function with respect to x, I get 1 over 2 square root x. Correct? Now dy dx, if can be approximated as we can say dy the change is basically 1 over 2 square root of x times dx correct so that is how we could write the change in y which i am talking about this value is it okay now we can make an approximation the approximation here is kind of like this we write dy equals to 1 over 2 square root of x times delta x. So that delta x is my approximation. So now look at it from the geometrical point of view. We are actually finding the rate of change at 25, not at 24. We are finding rate of change. So now the tangent here will be kind of like this. Do you see this tangent line? And what are we going to estimate? On this line, we'll actually estimate this point, which is not exactly on the curve, 
but very close. This will be extremely close if delta x is approaching 0. Perfect. So in this case, we are saying, when we write like this, we are saying delta x is approaching 0. But actually speaking, we have taken delta x as 0.4. You get the idea, right? So now, with this, we get an idea of what delta y could be. Correct? So let us see how to apply this method and find our solution, right? Okay. So basically, what we really know here is, what is the rate of change at x equals to 5? So we know now that dy dx is equal to 1 over 2 square root of 5, right? So what is dy dx when x is equal to 25? It is equals to 1 over 2 times square root of 25, and that is 1 over 10, okay? So we got the value of dy dx at our point of interest, which is 25, this point, 25, as 1 over 10. So this gradient is 1 over 10. Perfect. On this line, I'm going to find the approximate value by using this formula. That is, now we say dy or delta y for us is this value, right? That is dy of dx at x equals to 25, right, times delta x. And what is delta x for us? Delta x is 0.4. Do you see that? So what we are doing here is we are substituting this as square root of 25. And of course, in this case, it is it is a negative value of delta x, right? So, so for us, delta x is, in our case, delta x is minus 0 0.4. Is it okay? So we can substitute this value here, right? So we get the change in y. You get an idea, right? So, so let's substitute that value. So what we get here is 1 over 10, right, from 1. Let's call this as our equation 1. So we are substituting this value, 1 over 10, times delta x, which is 0.4. 0 0.4 correct so that gives you 0 0.04 as the change in y so delta y is with a negative sign since this was negative right so minus one right so that is the change and therefore the the value of square root of 24.6 should be equal to 5 minus 0 0.04 you get the idea right so that is how I'm going to write my value and it is 4.96. Do you see that part? So that is the approximation which I could do. I hope you got the steps. So steps are very simple. So you have to find the derivative of the function and then the value of the function at a point which is closest to your given point. And then incremental change is to be adjusted to get your value. Perfect. If you use the calculator, let's calculate and figure out what is the square root of 24.6 equal to. So in decimals, actually, it is uh, it is basically equal to 4.959. Do you see that? 983. Something like this. So our value of 4.96 is fairly accurate. You get an idea, right? So, so that is what we're trying to see. And you can see that we got just uh, 0 0.001 above this, right? So you can actually calculate the error here, which is very small. Perfect. But I hope you got the concept. Now, you can actually pause the video and solve for the next question. And in this case, what is our function? Our function f of x will be x to the power of 3 over 2, right? And follow these steps to get the answer, right? Here is my solution. So I think you have understood the method. Once you have understood the method, see how easy it is and how much time do we take to calculate the approximate value using this method. In a multiple choice test paper also, you can actually find this answer in less than a minute, right? So we are given 3.968 to the power of 3 over 2, right? So that means our function y will be equal to x to the power of 3 over 2. Do you see that? x to the power of 3 over 2. So dy dx 
Differentiating, we get 3 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1, so which is dy dx, I'm taking extra steps, x to the power of 1 over 2, correct? So square root of x. Now, how can you approximate 3 point 9, 6, 8 to the power of 3 over 2. Well, the closest value is 4, right? So, so we could think that this value, 3.968, could be written as equal to 4 minus. So, take away from 4 this value. So, you get 0 0.032, right? So, we could write this as, now this power to the power of 3 over 2, could be written like this, correct? So in our case, we will find rate of change at x equals to 4, correct? So we'll find now what is dy dx at x equal to 4. So we'll substitute 4 here. So we get 3 over 2 square root of 4, which is equal to 3. So that is the rate of change at this particular point dy by dx. Now we need to approximate for this, right? Now from the derivative itself, we have got rate of change this, we can write dy is equal to 3 by 2 x to the power of half times change in x, correct? So I could have substituted here also. Let me substitute again now. 3 by 2 x is x is equal to 4 for us, right? So, which is square root of 4 times the change here is 0 0.038 32, right? This is the change, 0 0.032, correct? So, the change in value is that much. This was a gradient at this point. Is that okay? So, that becomes your change in y. So, the change in y will be, this is 3 as you know, 3 times 0 0.032. So if you multiply, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, and then you get 0 0.0. So that is your change. Perfect. That is your change. Now, we should have found what is the value of 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Let's also calculate 4 to the power of 3 over 2. That is to say, square root of 4 and then cube, right? So it is kind of like this. 4 cube is okay. So square root of 4 and 2 cube is 8. So this is 8. And that is the change. And change we have to take away. Therefore, we can write our answer now. So what should be our answer? So I hope you got this. So we have 3.968 to the power of 3 by 2 should be equal to 8 and this was a negative change this is minus right so let me make it very clear so this is a negative change so it is negative or this value is negative correct so we'll from here take away 0 0.096 do you see that so it is slightly less than 8 and if you take away this that is 4 less right so 7.904 will be your answer. Is that okay? So that is how you get your solution. 7.904. So this value is approximately equal to slightly less than 8, 7.904. Do you get an idea? So now let's check this value with calculator and see how close we are. 3.968 to the power of 3 divided by 2, right? That is equal to, so if you check your result, you actually get what? You actually get 7.904192. So if you compare up to three decimal places, we got an accurate answer. So this method is that simple. Basically, you have to get a perfect point here, which was 4 for us. And 4 to the power of 3 over 2 was 8. Delta x is minus, right? So we will write here, delta x for us is minus 0 0.032. And so 
the gradient multiplied with this minus gives us 0 0.096 negative value. Take away this value from 8 and get your answer. Do you see that? So only these two steps can actually give you the right answer to three decimal places. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Feel free to write your comments and share your views and watch my detailed video on differentials, errors and approximations. You will come across many amazing examples which are going to help you in many test papers and also for entrance examinations to IITs. Thank you and all the best.